Pistols. Cue the montage. Yeah. All of you, none of me. You can bet a hundred at a time that I'm in a booth. Learn how to live with the animals on front of the zoo. Said he got a plug on the merch. I'm gonna send it through. Lately, I've been looking at them prawns like they minuscule. Ooh, hold on. Gotta see it through. I might hold a sword or a drink. I got different views. We can't even go out on the walk. We got different shoes. Told you I was supposed to stop. I ain't get the news. Look, I was on the block. Now I'm on the clock. Uh, used to push a mop. Now I'm on the shop. Look, put me in a box. The often overlooked, quite literal side piece of modern shooters. When you have the option to eliminate someone across the map with a sniper, dominate them in the mid range with an assault rifle, or shred them up close with a shotgun, why would you ever prioritize a weapon most games go out of their way to tell you were secondary? Well, that's actually the exact reason why I do it. Going full John Wick and tearing through a lobby or stage with just a pistol when there are clearly better options available is such a badass power fantasy. And you can bet your ass in games where you can select weapon proficiencies, your boy is going for a pistol build. Lately I've been playing a game that I feel has the perfect pistol, but before we get there, let's talk about some of the things that I like about the different types of sidearms. All of this is 100% subjective and based on my preferences, but if you agree or disagree with anything I'm about to say, let me know. Something about a standard semi-auto pistol really just does it for me. There's almost a David and Goliath aura associated with killing someone while using a weapon that has lower damage and fire rate than theirs. These are the most common handguns you'll see in video games and are probably what you think of when you hear your pistol is always faster than reloading. And this is kind of what they're designed for. You're in a situation where you either don't have time to reload or you have no more ammo in your primary, so you use your pistol until you find something better. They're small and lack the stopping power of some of their bigger family members, but they're also easy to handle and extremely customizable, so don't sleep on them. In the right hands, a pistol is just as deadly as any other weapon. These are my favorite of the categories that we'll talk about, and spoiler alert, the gun featured in the back half of the video falls under this umbrella. But some honorable mentions are Maria from Fallout New Vegas and the Peacemaker from Helldivers 2. On the other side of that coin, hand cannons are my least favorite type of sidearm. I've always been more of a handling and control guy than speed or power, so this is really not my vibe. Each bullet does massive damage, but at the cost of handling like Jamie Lannister after Walk of Punishment. To me, the trade-off is never worth it because while on paper, time to kill should be a lot lower than standard pistols, since you end up looking at the sky after every shot, the time it takes to readjust your aim in between them makes hand cannons a bit unwieldy. I will say that they're a lot more fun in modes or games where you can one-shot with them. Here I kind of look at them as mini snipers since there's a lot of the same risk reward. Our honorable mention is obviously the Desert Eagle from CSGO and Modern Warfare. This is the quintessential hand cannon and while it's not my cup of tea, we gotta pay respects for how iconic the weapon is. I mean, the Score Esports has a 20 minute documentary just about the Deagle. It's arguably the most recognizable pistol in gaming. Following up on that speed power analogy from earlier, we have machine pistols. Pistols that have low damage per bullet but usually extremely high fire rates. I like these a little more than hand cannons but they're still not my preference. They allow for a much heavier run and gun play style compared to the marksman mindset you need to have with a hand cannon. They can also be great choices to round out a kit with a primary that has a slow fire rate. My main problem with them is the more you kit them out, the more they start to feel like wish versions of SMGs. I don't care what you say, this is no longer a pistol. Spraying also just doesn't hit as hard as manually pulling the trigger for each of your shots. In my opinion, Siege's C75 Auto and Valorant's Frenzy do machine pistols right. Finally, revolvers are objectively cool as shit. They're also objectively kind of bad. Remember all that stuff I don't like about hand cannons? Times it by a million and if you think it's bad, make it worse. Because on top of a slow fire rate and taxing recoil, you now only have six shots in the chamber and a lengthy reload without a speed loader. Granted, it may only take one or two bullets to put someone in the dirt, but when you have six shots and your opponent has 30, that math kind of does itself. So you would assume that I have similar feelings about revolvers and hand cannons, but the vibes here are unmatched. You're gonna have a hell of a time using this as a primary weapon, but my god will you look good doing it. The western cowboy vibes are a must, and revolvers also tend to be pretty aesthetically pleasing weapons. Despite the fact that they're kinda trash, I love a good revolver and I reserve the right to make a separate list specifically for them later on. The Peacekeeper in Overwatch is my honorable mention here, and honestly extra kudos to any game that lets you fan the hammer. I wanna give dual wielding its own little section because it's a nice 
nice novelty, if a bit impractical. It's also not exclusive to any one type of pistol, so I wasn't really sure where to put it. Aesthetically, this is also cool as hell, and I'd even go as far as to say there's a sense of iconism about dual wielding pistols. There's a reason a ton of big time characters take the two is better than one approach. I can get on board with this if I'm in the right mood for it, but the asking price of giving up your ability to ADS is usually a little rich for my blood. Now time for the main course. Halo Infinite's sidekick is perfect. This gun immediately caught my attention when they were releasing trailers and gameplay footage and I distinctly remember being excited to get my hands on it. While 343 dropped the ball on more than a few things with the launch of Infinite's multiplayer, they absolutely cooked with the sidekick. Visually, which if you've been around the channel for a while, you know carries the most weight for me, I absolutely love this design. The base model is sleek and elegant, but the sidekick can also be customized with different barrels, charms, and colors if you prefer something more flamboyant. Personally, I like to stick with the clear or minimalist designs, but whatever you like, there's something here for you. I really wish Infinite had weapon inspects where your Spartan would play with the charm or rack the gun so you could really get a more intimate look at the weapon, but there's at least a decent idle animation. I don't talk about sound design near enough in my videos, but it needs to be mentioned here. Just listen to this. I'm about to bust. They honestly popped off with all the ballistics in Infinite, but the snappy, punchy firing effect does so much to make it feel like your shots are doing some real damage. This is one of those unsung heroes when it comes to weapon design. A lot of people, myself included, don't even play games with the sound on in casual shooters, but sound design can really make or break weapon feel. Here, watch how much worse this sounds with a weaker firing effect. It just doesn't hit the same, does it? Of course, none of that would matter if the weapon itself didn't handle well and the balance they struck here is brilliant. The sidekick is pinpoint accurate when tap firing but also offers a pretty spammable fire rate. This allows the weapon to be a viable option in both mid-range and close quarter engagements. There are obviously better options for both but in a jam the sidekick can definitely get you out of some sticky situations. But what really makes the sidekick stand out when compared to other pistols is the way it interacts with the rest of Infinite Sandbox. In most modern shooters, pistols are complementary at best and downright negligible at worst. A good pistol can give a shotgun loadout more range or a sniper a fighting chance in close quarter fights, but with a primary that's well rounded, it's entirely possible to never even need to pull your pistol out during a match in some games. Not with a sidekick. With how integral it is to infinite sandbox, if you manage to go a full match and never use the sidekick, I don't think it's too much of a stretch to say that you're not playing the game right. Once an enemy shield is popped in Halo Infinite, shots to the head deal significantly increased damage. In this state, a single headshot from the sidekick will put an enemy down. And remember how I said it was really accurate when you're not spamming? The sidekick often serves as the exclamation point at the end of your sentence in most engagements. Spray down an enemy with the assault rifle to break their shield, switch to the sidekick to finish them with a single well placed shot. Maybe you hit a really good grenade that did a lot of damage but didn't quite finish the job, the sidekick is often the best option to get you over that finish line. And probably my favorite combo, one body shot with the sniper and one headshot with the sidekick will turn anyone unfortunate enough to have let you pick up the power weapon into a spectator for the next few seconds. Being a 7 shot kill under the right circumstances, the sidekick is more than capable of standing its own ground, but it's specifically switching to it to finish off an already wounded opponent that I find so satisfying. It feels so much more deliberate and calculated than just unceremoniously killing someone with your primary. But those are my thoughts on why the sidekick is the best pistol in modern gaming. The intentionality behind its place in Infinite Sandbox makes it seem more like an alternate than a secondary weapon, and as a lover of pistols, I really appreciate that. Again, if you agree or disagree with anything I've said here or you feel like I missed something, definitely let me know in the comments. While you're down there, don't forget to leave a like so the algorithm knows to recommend the video to more people. Also, let me know if you'd like to see this turn into a series where I talk about shotguns, snipers, and SMGs across all of the games that I've played. Thanks for watching until the very end, and I'll see you in the next one.